And here we are, ladies and gents. After trials and tribulations, 915 has set the live servers, and you might be wondering if it's worth coming back to WoW. Well, between covenants not restricting players to go through week-long quests to reset and change, multiple catch-up mechanics implemented, and Mage Tower making a return, it suffice to say that it's at least worth checking out. So bookmark this video because we will give you everything you need to know for 9.1.5. First, let's talk about what you can do to catch up to your main or with your friends once you get into the game. You will want to check out Odara, a vendor in Orbos next to the Flight Master which will sell you a few things of interest. If you are at Renown 80 with your character, you can purchase the Broker, Mark of the Distinction, an account-wide item that will set a character that uses it to Renown 40 with its current covenant. This can clearly help a lot with setting your renown standing to 40 with a covenant you just started with. Really good to skip a good chunk of the grind and start to get the first few good soulbind traits ASAP. The NPC will also sell a Traveler's Anima Cash, another account-wide item that will let you transfer anima between alts. Similarly, you can get the time-bound ruminations, uh, I know the word, which is an item that will set a companion's level to 30 and it's unlocked to be purchased once you already have a companion at level 40. In terms of actual gear, you can acquire the Valorous Equipment Chest for Mythic Dungeon Loot and the Unchained Equipment Chest for the PvP equivalent. These are unlocked when you reach 1500 Mythic Plus rating and 1600 PvP rating for the respective chest. Using any of these items will create a random item from the respective loot tables appropriate for your specialization. A neat little way to gear more characters, provided you paid proper respects to the RNG gods. Ah, they're really good. And lastly, Aldara will also give you an heirloom upgrade item, so you can level your alts even faster in Shadowlands by you know, upgrading the heirlooms. Buy the Eternal Heirloom Armor Casing and Scabbard for their respective items and upgrade your entire Heirloom sets because what else are you gonna do with the gold? <laughs> There's clearly catch up with Renown. As I previously mentioned, you can buy the token from Odora for up to 40 Renown, but other sources of Renown have been updated as well. First of all, the Threads of Fate bonus objectives will have better Renown rewards. For those of you who opt to level through the Threads of Fate and not the story, you should have a better time at prepping your Covenant grind because you know you can start with the level 40 and then get more. And hey, you will also now be able to get one Renown from each of your Torghast runs as well as XP. More incentive to do Torghast or more rewards for doing Torghast? Whichever way you want to think about it, you will have more sources of Renown to kind of soften up even more the progress gating that the expansion has for its characters. The weekly quest for redeemed souls is now repeatable. Not only that, you will get it at 20 souls directly and you can complete it through Torghast as well. And speaking of Torghast, the currencies for your legendaries are also more accessible now. First of all, you will be able to level through Torghast now and also gain soul ash in the process as well as tower knowledge for the box of many things. Second, you will be able to repeat your wings and layers for the same full amount of both soul ash and soul cinders effectively removing the weekly cap on how much you can get from each run. That's actually pretty neat. It changes the dynamic of the content a bit and actually rewards you if you plan to just spam it a whole bunch. Not to mention that all of this will be further supplemented by the fact that all sources of soul cinders have been buffed to increase the amount of the respective currency it will provide you with. This includes the actual Torghast layers, the Tormentors of Torghast events, more assaults and command table missions. Again, the buffs will make farming and upgrading your legendaries a lot less time consuming. And last but not least, the rune carver will be able to destroy a legendary and refund you with all of the spent soul ash and soul cinders. You will unfortunately still be at a loss for the base item and the missives with this one, but at least you get the currency to reinvest into a new legendaries or make it easier to recraft it in another slot, saving you a bunch of farming time. Aside from the broker Odara and her available chests, gear has been made more accessible from other sources as well. 
Duchess Minx in Corthia, the Death Advance Quartermaster, will now sell you targeted items for a desired armor slot for the price of some Stygia. So no more rolling the dice, at least not here. The overall drop rate for the Shards of Domination has been increased, which makes grinding the raid less required for alts and people who just want to get the shards and be done with it. And on the subject of drop rate increase, the legendary recipes that drop from dungeons will also have their drop chance increased to 100%, regardless of the difficulty you are in when you loot the boss or the chest in question. You can spend more time on the gloomy beaches of Corthia for more catalog research that will drop since the relics that drop in Corthia will also be more available. First of all, rares will have a chance to still drop the relics upon repeat kills, as opposed to just being loot locked per day. Second, more enemies will drop relics as a whole, and third, the trained Gromit will be able to locate even more relic caches. The Corthia Rifts will also be addressed. Now, if you have Tier 4 unlocked with the Archivist Codex on the account, any character on that account can access a weekly quest called Lost Research, which will send you in a rift to complete and reward you with big chunks of rep and catalogued research, while the enemies there will drop relic fragments and full relics as well. In the hopes of getting your gear quicker, you will be able to gather resources faster. Professions have been buffed to have their mats get a 20% drop rate increase, with jewel crafting essence drop rate only getting a 10% boost. Still, this should make people farming mats with mining, leatherworking, tailoring and all of that have an easier time getting them and maybe, just maybe, the mats won't be more expensive in the auction house on populated servers than the actual product. Please? Please? Most of the additions to the patch will be improvements to the quality of life and possibly the biggest selling point for anyone that's playing Shadowlands in any serious capacity will be the changes to the Covenants. First of all, once you reach Renown 80, you will earn the achievement Renowned. Then this will allow any character on your account to freely change to any other Covenant as often and as many times as you would like. Once you've swapped to a new Covenant, you will not transfer over your current Renown and Anima. Each Covenant retains their own Renown levels, Anima Mount stored, Mission Table Companions and Soulbinds unlocked. Although you will start with the first Soulbind unlocked and the first few ch chapters skippable as before, in 915 you can skip the entire campaign if you already completed it on a different character and as a consequence have all the Soulbinds unlocked as well. Although not necessarily Covenant related, you can also skip the Maw introductory questline just as you start your Shadowlands journey. You will still need a level 60 character to do so, but once the story has been done, skipping it seems just fine, so long as you are okay with missing the quest rewards you were going to receive in the first place. More so, Conduit Energy will be gone and you can use the cosmetics unlocked by all characters that can wear the armor type from the respective covenant, regardless of their covenant affiliation. The Anima Conductor has been improved with a few changes. First of all, the buffs are permanent within non-instance Shadowland zones and it can be channeled at all locations each day, as opposed to once per day. And you can get grateful offerings at a higher rate since they will drop from Covenant Callings, based on the level of your Anima Conductor. For all the Kyrian boys and girls, the Path of Ascension is now less of a headache. There will be no cost to enter and the Soulbinds can get an activatable 20% buff from the Brazier of Progressive Power. The drop rates of the crafting components has been increased by 10%, while the Soul Mirror Shards now have a chance to drop from the Maw Sworn Kyrian mobs found in the Maw. Nightfey have a neat little change where the seeds will stack to 200 in your inventory as opposed to the previous 20 and the quality of the seeds will be increased from rewards. You will also have new soul shapes to collect, specifically the critter shapes. These, well, uh, critter shapes will let you take the shape of an actual critter when you use your soul shape within a rested area and turn you back into your regular soul shape outside. The Venthyr will have changes to the Ember Court as well. Once you complete the best friend quest for a guest, that particular NPC will offer a quest inside the scenario to all players who visit and your alt are no exception. These are the friend of a friend quests and give a permanent 30% friendship gains buff with the respective guest. Temel will sell you the Party Herald's Party Hat, which is account bound and will give you a rep boost by 30% with the Ember Court. When you use it, of course. 
When you queue for a scenario, if a guest has not RSVP'd yet, you'll get a confirmation message to let you know they will not attend the event. And that is just matters, you know? One last tidbit, when it comes to your Covenant Anima Reservoir, you will actually have a quest at your Archivist NPC in Corthia that will unlock the Anima Diverter, a neat little device which you can use to store Anima into your Covenant's Reservoir without having to actually travel to your Covenant's hub. Time walking might be the next most exciting thing you can look forward to in 915. First of all, quickly addressing current time walking dungeons from all eras, some will go away and be replaced with other dungeons from their respective content. This is a good change for some of these since those dungeons are notoriously more difficult or at least cumbersome than the rest of the dungeon pool. I'm looking at you, Black Morass and Pit of Sauron. I see you. Well, not anymore. E and starting with 915, time walking will be an event that shows up every third week. For now at least. And with this we can go into the meaty bits. Legion time walking! Finally it's here! First things first, the first two weeks of the patch will all be Legion time walking weeks and the available dungeons will be Black Crook Hold, Eye of Ajara, Dark Heart Thicket, Vault of the Wardens, Neltharion's Lair and Court of Stars. Quite a few you might wonder, why are they so many? That's because with the dungeons we will have time walking mythic plus. Yes! You will have a time worn keystone to activate it and among the features, the dungeons will have their own affixes with a new affix called Infernal. This affix will be represented by a beacon situated near some bosses and when activated or engaging the boss regardless, you will trigger a legion invasion. Yeah, you heard right. The other cool part about it is that these dungeons will scale and count towards the weekly vault rewards with items that can be upgradable. To get a key, you will just have to visit the shop, the shoop, an NPC in Oribos. And as with all time walking events, you will get a vendor as well. Ari Dormi will be located in Legion Dalaran near the flight path and among all of the goodies it has available for you, you can buy a Suramar nostalgic toy to reminisce about all those times you tried to sneak around. Call the Nightborn's guard vigilant. Ah, the memories. No, Mr. Guard, I am stealth. No, you cannot detect me. Moving on, you'll also be able to buy some sweet, sweet Nightborn themed weapons and shields. And if that's not enough, you will have to get the replica Ages of Agrimar, which I better see it on a paladin. I better not see you wear it on a shaman. Don't do it, man. Have some decency. Also, some Ravencrest played said because Black Rook Hold is the best place to spend your Christmas in 2021. <laughs> and of course, you thought I forgot, didn't you? Well, I didn't! Mage Tower is coming back, baby! In all its Legion glory. Well, almost. It will be active during the time walking event and it looks like you just talk to the NPC outside the tower and you get ported in to do the actual challenge. As for the challenge itself, we have a video on it, which we recommend you check. After this one, of course. You won't get artifact appearances for it, but you do unlock a recolored set akin to the Tuma Sargeras Mythic tier set or the Gladiator PvP set for each class. Killing all seven different challenge bosses will get you a Tour of Towers achievement, unlocking the Soaring Spell Tome Mount, which, I mean, come on, who isn't going to play a mage and rock this baby out? I think this alone warrants a lot of attention for the content and hey, nostalgia or not, who is not happy for getting challenges back into the game, eh? Speaking of Legion content, not time walking, but still much appreciated, and Taurus and Nighthole have been nerfed on Mythic difficulty to be easier to solo. A good change was to the Coven of Shivara where they no longer have the 99% damage reduction shield when they are soloed. Gul'dan was addressed and nerfed as well, but unfortunately E.R.N.R. remains a smidge more difficult to do for some classes. BFA raids and dungeons also received a legacy loot treatment a tad sooner than normal, which is definitely a good change. Now you can farm your battle for the Zara lore mythic transmog. What? Just me? Fine. For every one of you pirates out there, island expeditions have been addressed with them being soloed or with up to a party of three players on all difficulties. You might say, but why? Well, actually there are still a buttload of cosmetics and mounts and stuff to unlock. So this is actually really nice for you collectors out there. And Warfronts, what? What about Warfronts you say? Well, they can now be done with five players instead of 15, the normal ones. 
Again, cosmetics, cosmetics, and really, it's a good change to keep the old content at least doable in more modern times. Not only time walking was addressed, but current content as well. Mythic Plus has a few improvements also. First of all, when the key starts, 2 minute cooldowns will also reset alongside the 3 plus minute ones, making the start of any and all keys be a bit more, let's say, explosive. Aside this, some annoying affixes have been made uh, less annoying. The bolster affix which buffed the mobs will now have a 20 second duration as opposed to lasting the entire combat. This is actually a pretty big buff which can be felt in higher keys where fights can last quite a bit for each pack, rather than having to die and reset one or two mobs that just have too many bolster sacks to be worth killing, now you wait. Although 20 seconds is still a long time for an M plus key, players have a way to figure out things always, so I, uh, I'm pretty hopeful. Necrotic is also nerfed to last 6 seconds down from 9. This will essentially make tanks that want to reset their stacks have an easier time doing so. Blood Death Knights will rejoice! Last but not least, Raging has been nerfed to only provide the mobs with a 50% damage boost rather than the 75%. This feels like a solid adjustment rather than a nerf. Raging felt it was doing way too much damage compared to every other thing tanks needed to be aware of. It caught my butt off guard one too many times, let me tell ya. Although we won't touch upon everything that changed for every spec, because uh, it's quite a bit, the major changes happened to a few specs and we will mention them. Probably the biggest change is the AoE cap improved, and by improvement I mean that the abilities that have previously been capped at 5 or 8 targets will now be soft cap at 5 and 8 targets respectively, dealing reduced damage past their intended soft cap. This includes almost all AoE abilities in the game, with of course the exception of the already uncapped ones. This is definitely a step in the right direction and a potential meta shift, especially in Mythic Plus Dungeons. And going back to classes and specs, first of all, Frost Mages will be buffed. Yeah, fancy that, eh? Icicles will receive a 12% damage increase, Frostbolt an 8% and Flurry 10%. Although Frost Mage sits at the top of the meta in Mythic Dungeons, in Raids the sadness is a bit more real. The increase in damage to the aforementioned skills assists the single target more than anything. Another change comes to Fury Warrior, which has had its damage penalty aura to its auto attacks removed, essentially providing it with 43% more auto attack damage and subsequently a total of 4% single target damage boost overall. Again, good change to a class that was struggling in the raid compared to the top specs. Want more white damage? You got it! Hunter has received a major nerf to Binding Shot, where the skill can now be broken by damage taken. So if you already did a dungeon and you couldn't keep targets rooted, well, it was definitely not a bug. This change is a bit weird and out of left field, but hey, better to be aware of it, yeah? <laughs> On top of this, there are a lot of fixed issues. Hunter is able to tame new types of beasts, druids getting new travel forms, so the devs have been pretty busy. Definitely seems the patch has received a lot more attention than we expected. And speaking of the unexpected, if you are playing allied races, you are in for a treat. Starting with the Nightborn because Horde Bias, you have glowing hands! Oh yes, finally you can actually associate with the Surbar NPCs and light your way through the Corthia Rifts with improved, self-made flashlights! All jokes aside, there are a lot more hairstyles, hair colors, body tattoos, eyebrow changes, jewelry additions and more! I mean, just look at all this stuff! Nightborn is one of my favorite allied races and I am super stoked to rock glowing hands and longer eyebrows! Lightforge Draenei's, do not worry, you too have a lot more horn options, hair colors and some pretty crazy body decorations when it comes to facial hair for the dudes and horn ornaments for everybody and a lot more jewelry for the ladies. To be fair, the amount of stuff you can add or remove is pretty ridiculous in a good way because you need this, I need this, we all need this. Void Elves are no exceptions, among the hair recolors and ear changes you can now toggle tentacles? Hello? Nazoth? Is it me you're looking for? And we can close it off with the High Mountain Torrent, which received some pretty badass antler changes. Antlers? Horns? The things on their heads that all moose or bulls have? And if you dreaded the dungeon quest that sends you off into the world to unlock the allied race as well, they be gone. Out! Kaput! Bye bye! You no longer have to do them, you can skip them, so you know, 
that's pretty good. This is pretty much the main things that will be going into the patch. It's actually pretty good changes and we hope you will enjoy it. Let us know in the comment section down below. Thank you to our patrons for supporting the content that we do. You guys rock, you make all of this possible. We love you. And dear viewer, if you want to support us a little bit more and see exactly what this is all about, you can check the link down below. There are multiple Patreon tiers. Maybe there's one that you can vibe with. Maybe you'll like the rewards and you know, support us. Come, join the team, join the Discord, see the bands and memes and uh, I think it's fine. Thank you, you get it, you get it. Thank you for watching the video. See you next time. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wild. Well. Still, I play wild. Well. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wild. Well. Still, I play wild. Well. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wild. Well.